Hi guys, how you doing? It is a beautiful morning here in London and today I am gonna walk a bit around Baker Street. I've just popped down to be like literally maybe 15, 20 minutes to walk down here. Um, today is gonna be major Harry Potter vibes for anyone who is into that. Um, the buildings around here are absolutely stunning and um, are very inspired um, for the Harry Potter movies. So without further ado, I'm gonna go round to Sherlock Holmes to that area. Um, Baker Street, Madden to Swords, I don't know. Wherever, wherever my Fitbit steps take me. Um, but yeah, it's not raining, so I'm very happy. I'm just starting off um, kind of north of Baker Street. Uh, Regent's Park is just across the way there. And we have got already some beautiful buildings. We've got a lovely St. Cyprian church there. And as we go along Park Road, how Harry Potter is that? So yeah, a lot of the buildings around here no doubt inspired JK Rowling and these buildings are usually well I would say in a lot of cases they are businesses some of them are houses some obviously split into flats as well and I know people are gonna say Hannah you're walking past a blue plaque what does that say Jose de San Martin there we go and I will shout out any blue plaques I do see I must admit sometimes I don't know who the people are but you can always have a little Google and I find this really interesting because where Regent's Park is just behind here, you've got this collision of these creamy white buildings. And then as we pan across, these gorgeous, dare I say Georgian, buildings all around this area. And I must confess, guys, I slept for about four hours last night. I don't understand why, and I know I've said this in a couple of vlogs recently. Um, so if I'm struggling to get my words out, apologies, but I will do my best. And thinking about it, you will see these types of buildings as well around, I'd say the King's Cross area. Um, quite a few people have these as uni houses, which is pretty epic, but not necessarily very nice inside. And also to note, this vlog will probably have buses going past, sirens, people talking, as we are into zone one here. So, busy, busy times. What is that? It looks like it's gonna rain over there. It said 7% chance of rain as the bus goes past. <laughs> And then we are literally on Baker Street now, and with that sun in the background, it is pretty quiet. We obviously are in the middle of a lockdown for the mask police out there. I will be wearing my mask when I am nearer people. That is my preference, not the law. Um, but as we pan to the right, over here, we have a certain Sherlock Holmes address. But just to show you, if you are in this area and it's normal times and you are maybe a tourist, I would really recommend the Volunteer Pub. I've been here a bunch of times. They usually have like outdoor seating uh, with the doors open, but you are literally two doors down from where said Sherlock Holmes was meant to be living. And without getting run over, we are outside what is 221B Baker Street. It is very sunny today. <laughs> My goodness, but yes, this is the Sherlock Holmes Museum, as you can see, which obviously is closed at the moment. I did look online, usually it's 15 quid for adults, um, but it is this quirky four-story Georgian house. It goes all the way up, and you can see the blue plaque there in the middle. Consulting detective, 1881 to 1904. And um, four stories is the museum, and then obviously there is a basement as well. But yeah, normally you would have like a policeman outside or a a plod and I've been past here I mean dare I say hundreds of times in normal times and yes they usually have a guy sit outside which definitely makes for the cool effect and then we've got these cool little lamps up there which look awesome I love love it when a light bulbs like that I don't know what they're called what are they called guys or they're like squiggly inside the bowl and yeah I'm gonna go to the front and just see if we can see in without being rude can probably see part of my reflection and not much else but it looks like the gift shop is in the front of the store but no doubt this will open as soon as it can but yeah pretty cool and next door we have got a bit of a sad looking uh, <laughs> a gift shop but do bear in mind obviously everything is shut at the moment and then you've got the London Beatles store um, which has got some cool looking knickknacks and things in there and yeah the gift shop I did look online at the Sherlock Holmes Museum apparently it's full of all lots of little bits and bobs and treats so yeah take your pocket money if you're gonna go I'm sure there's lots of quirky things to buy
Now, I have no need to go into Baker Street Station, so I'm sure you'll understand that I'm not able to show the inside of the tube, but um, yeah, in some of my old vlogs, obviously I have shown the tube, but in normal times, I will of course show you. Now you're probably wondering, Hannah, are you waffling on? Where on earth are you in the world? So we are literally just on the corner here and I've just walked along this bit here, Park Road, down Baker Street past Sherlock Holmes Museum. Um, so what I'm gonna do is scoot and just show you the Marlebone Road. And then I'm thinking we'll carry on down Baker Street, probably loop around somewhere, didn't, I'm not sure, go through a couple of the parks, and then I will go at some point up to Marlebone High Street, which is a very nice area with some nice shops, and then back round to the famous Madame Two Swords. And if you want a bit more of a zoomed out shot without the reflection of the sky, Regent's Park is obviously up here. I live like up there, and yeah. Hyde Park is down here, so we will get quite close to Hyde Park, but we'll loop around and stay in the um, kind of busy building areas. Oh gosh, that sky is looking a bit scary, isn't it? Um, but I've already shown a couple of shots of Chilton Court, which is this beautiful building um, that is above the station, but there's a couple more plaques here that aren't blue, but we've got another Arthur, um, another author even, Arnold Bennett, who lived here, and then we've also got H.G. Wells, who also lived here. So yeah, interesting to see. Lots of interesting people have lived here. Right, moving on. It might be a bit noisy down here, I'm not gonna lie. This is the main road, that is the Marlebone Road, that goes from the A40, which is all the way through to Oxford if you carried on the whole way, pretty much. See what I mean? <laughs> but it's usually pretty gridlocked along here. I hate driving along here. But just at the front of the station now, as expected, Baker Street obviously is a really busy one. Uh, you've got the Bakerloo line, which is my probably favourite line because I live on it. No, it's not my favourite. Um, none of them are. Uh, the Jubilee, Hammersmith and City and Circle Lines and the Met line. But yeah, it's usually really busy along here. Anyone who um, has ever come here for work or anything will remember how busy it is. And it's interesting to see that the M&S food is shut, the Pret is shut. Basically everything is shut along here, so, um, oh, maybe maybe not the Starbucks, but yeah, interesting. And here we have a little statue, it says commissioned by Sherlock Holmes Society of London from 1999. And yeah, look at him, that is huge. Go on, green man. Oh, how did that happen? Yeah, you might wake up quite a while to cross the road. <laughs> head on along at Baker Street and see what we can find but yeah you're gonna get a lot of chains and restaurants and things like that I mean KFC Starbucks <laughs> McDonald's Costa it's not probably as exciting as it was back in the day but we'll go on some of the side roads uh, to see some of the more interesting things I must say personally for me I think this is almost like too central to live um, I don't know even though we're near Regent's Park I think this probably is a bit too noisy for me, I don't know. How central would you live in a city? Um, I mean, at the moment, you can't really benefit from anything. Oh, even Pret is shut. It's just so weird. I mean, I guess it'd be good to be near a Nando's um, and the post office and a Joe and the Juice. There's the one thing that I'm missing right by me is Joe and the Juice. There's one at Primrose Hill, but it's a bit of a walk. And when you're driving, if you get anywhere near one of these dreaded red seas, you're in trouble. <laughs> No, I'm joking. It basically is the congestion charge. I'm sorry, sure anyone who lives in London watching this will be like, I know everyone knows that. Um, but yeah, to um, drive into this area basically starts on the road just where we came from. You have to pay a fee every single day, even if you're a taxi. Um, and there are things like discounts if you have an electric car. I think some cars are free-ish. Um, and if you live in the actual um, zone, you get like a major, major discount. But it's very, very expensive. And I just double checked, it is £15 a day which is a lot and it's seven days a week so for me I've lived in London for literally ages now um, I used to drive into the city probably like on a Sunday I would go to like Oxford Street park my car go to the shops but now it's seven days a week except for I think Christmas Day I think that's the only exception but enough of the money making from the mayor um, this is a beautiful street I've just come along to York Street just make sure I get the name right but yeah this is a typical side road in the whole of this area got lots of different colorful front doors 
I can see another blue plaque down there, but I'm not going that far, so we'll have to make a skip on that one, but a lot of these will be offices. Something I do love is where you have all these gorgeous houses, Harry Potter vibes, is you then have these red brick older buildings, and don't quote me, I, I, I'm not sure what era these are from, but I love the mix of the two. There we go, that's a bit near. I was trying not to get run over, but yeah, how beautiful is that? And these are most probably apartments. And if you are in the area looking for food or drink, I would, this this kitchen at home looks pretty cute. Um, I personally would recommend going to Marlborough High Street, which we will go to probably about two roads away, rather than going to places like this. I mean, if you want to go for it, but I would recommend elsewhere. So I've just come down Crawford Street, which is honestly just off Baker Street right there. And there's places like this. So you've got this pub here called the Beehive. Obviously it's shut. I would way recommend, way more recommend, that's terrible grammar, um, coming to a place like this rather than uh, one of the places on Baker Street. And again, some more city bikes, if you want to give those a hire, they don't come with a helmet, but you know, I think most people driving in London are aware of tourists using these that they might not be too, too confident, so we do look out for you. And what I mean is when you're driving in London, I do see, um, obviously like in a normal summer, you can tell which ones, who has tourists on those bikes, they're like wigging along, they're very, very heavy bikes to ride. Um, but we always give a wide berth, shall we say. Oh, please don't rain, please don't rain. Right, I'm going right off track here, but I just want to show you, there's always lots of little streets um, down the side, obviously, with different little shops. And I think that they are probably more interesting than the main part of actual Baker Street Road. So here we've got a few little things, obviously they are close, nice little Turkish restaurant. But everything around here will be decent, it will be nice. And then this is Gloucester Place, which is very similar to Baker Street, we're literally one block along. Um, but yeah, if you go down Crawford Street, there are loads of restaurants, um, quite often with a little outdoor seating, uh, and everything that you really need to be honest with you. But if you want to go to a chain restaurant, go for it, but yeah major harry potter vibes for that building again and as we head along baker street i'm gonna be honest with you everything is kind of similar along here it's a lot of offices and we eventually get to selfridges but the green man says walk so i'm gonna walk along and go down the side roads and show you off the beaten track because i feel like it's just a bit more interesting but what have we got along here um you've got the what's along there house of fraser head office um that's all i know <laughs> I'm not sure about any other companies. So places like this, the Barley Mo, look just a bit more interesting to go to. This is an authentic British pub, I would say. Um, and you've got other little restaurants and cafes nearby. There's quite a lot of Greek, Turkish. You're gonna get a good mix of food along here um, in this entire area, actually, to be fair. We've got a Ted's grooming room. This is Ted Baker branded. So there are a few of them, actually, um, in London. It's very, very fancy place. Oh, you probably can't quite see it. For gentlemen to go and get their beard or their hair trimmed, it's pretty cool. And just more quirky stores, dashing tweeds. I mean, tweed to cycle your bike in, it's quite funny. And basically it brings you to Chilton Street, which for me is a place that I became very aware of while I was actually at uni. I did design at uni, I did textile design at Central St. Martins. And this was the kind of place, I'm just gonna show you along here because this uh, place in the corner is cute. This is kind of the place to be inspired, especially for men's fashion, um, but yeah. You have got this place, which is, I'm going to show you the menu because I think it's quite pricey. I mean, it's not too bad. Oh, A-OK. -okay. It's a very Instagrammable place. I'm sure I can quickly peek in the window, but this is a typical, like, nicer restaurant in this area. So what have we got? Um, chicken, £24, and then obviously you need to add sides. Um, salmon, 28 quid. I'm probably not showing this in a very good order. And a salad there for like 13 to 15 pounds. But to be honest with you, I think most people come here for how beautiful it is. It's absolutely stunning. And there are people inside doing work, so I don't really want to stick my camera in. That's probably a bit of a better shot. A okay. Check out their Instagram. They have got loads of cute pictures and they have basically like giant trees and stuff inside. And just off the side, you've got Manchester Street, another Georgian Terrace Road, very nice. So yeah, as I say, lots of men's fashion stores along here, obviously very premium, something very special. Lots of bespoke and smaller brands. Ooh, Chilton Street Deli looks cute. I like their little shop fit. 
Um, they've got mulled wine. Not sure if they're legally allowed to sell that at the moment. Maybe that's an old sign. Yeah, very nice. I've also realised I've said very nice about 300 times already. But it is. It's very nice. Ooh, I do love like a dark, kind of moody, masculine shop front. Um, am I weird? Am I weird? I'm just intrigued what this is. It looks like a very nice... Oh, it's this brand. They sell crazy expensive candles. They're like £200 plus. One day maybe, one day. Oh, here's a random fact about my life. As we go on this tour, Casely Hayford, let's cross the road. Um, Joe Casely Hayford, who sadly passed away um, a couple of years ago now, I worked with him on a collaboration in one of the jobs that I was in. Very, very lovely man. But yes, this is his store, hello. He's probably known, I think he dressed Princess Diana quite a lot, but his son is a very famous designer now. And then we have Monocle, which is always Instagrammed. Obviously, there are people around, so I'm not going to do that. But they obviously do very good flat whites, says there's a few people outside. And considering there's no one else around, it must be good. And probably the last point of interest along here, you have got a certain firehouse here. This is the Chilton Firehouse, which is now being converted into a very, very bougie, expensive hotel. And it is also a restaurant. And quite often there are, well, I'll say there always is celebs here. There are even. My grammar today. Gosh, apologies. But yes, it is a stunning building. If you can get a reservation, it's very, very difficult to, obviously, when it is open, but it's a really, really fun place to go. I remember having some really nice crab donuts for a starter. Very nice. So that is Chilton Street, and as that red bus goes past, that is Baker Street. So we're just going to keep off that track. Um, I'm sure you guys don't mind, but yes, there are lots of interesting stores along here, and... Uh, tasty corner lots of places to get food sandwiches anything you really really need but do have a google if you come into this area there's loads of good places to go that aren't actually on baker street like i say i would recommend going up to sherlock holmes museum then walking a bit down baker street and taking one of these side roads to get a drink or a spot of lunch but marlebone high street i think is probably the number one place to go for food and drinks just a little bit of a browse now before we head down another road I just wanted to show you this beautiful church, this is St James's Roman Catholic Church, Marlebone. Very nice, pretty gothic, I like it. Gothic? Mm, I'm not sure. What do you think? And we have another blue plaque, Sir Francis Beaufort, Admiral and Hydro Hydrographer. Oh, I'll have to Google that one. Now I think I'm a lander in here. It doesn't say private, Manchester Muse, but you get a pretty awesome view of the church. Look at that. <laughs> so cool. Ooh, and there is a green here. We are on Manchester Square. And as I pan over, we've got the Wallace Collection, which I know is quite a popular tourist place to go. It's free entry, obviously shut. Um, but yeah, lots of, I think it's like antiques, sculptures, sourced from all over the world. So it's a little place, but probably a nice one to go in, if it, especially if it's raining. <laughs> probably a good escape from this area. But yeah, we've got a bit of an office block going on there, and then some more gorgeous buildings over there. Oh, I'm a bit short, I can't get over the bushes. <laughs> this is so funny, I probably look really bizarre doing this because in London it's quite, I will be honest, it's quite easy to vlog because you just look like a tourist but there aren't any tourists so you just look like a crazy woman. I'm going to put my sunglasses on because actually there's no point. <laughs> and in this corner of Manchester Square I have always liked, I don't know, I like this little bit here, it reminds me a bit of Downing Street. Oh we've got some blue plaques, we've also walked past loads and haven't shown you so apologies. I'll be here all day if I'm showing all of them, but I don't know, I just think it looks really nice. So who have we got here? Sir Julius Benedict, who was a composer. And who's the other one? Oh, look at these lamps. Don't these lamps look cool? Let me show you a bit nearer. Very cool. Uh, John Hewlings Jackson, a physician. Hmm, I do love these lamps. They look very cliche. I feel like I'm in a movie. But yes, it is beautiful. Where's the grey sky gone? This is good. Hopefully I won't get rained on because I don't have my brolly. I do think in this area that you could honestly just walk around for absolute ages. Um, I would say looking at Baker Street to the right is just a bit more interesting. Um, just my personal preference. 
you're gonna get really sick of all these panning shots by the end of this vlog. <laughs> And we're going to go along Marlebone Rain. It's only a little road, but again, a normal pub. The Coachmaker's Arms. Oh, I think this is quite a nice one, actually. That rings a bell. Let's check the menu. A lot of them will have menus on the outside. Some of them have um, changed them to COVID info. But what have we got here? I'm trying to get that in shot. Um, there's, a, there's a bin in the way. Right, what have you got? Burger for 16.50. Cod and chips for 17. Yeah, that is standard, decent pub like nice pub prices. I know some people would be like, wow, that's really expensive. Is it like really good quality beef for a burger? Um, and the answer probably is no. We, it costs a lot of money to eat out in London versus like the grocery stores, like the, the shopping that I've shown you guys. So when you do eat out, it is a lot more, especially if you're coming from America, our prices are just quite a lot. I would say per person, if you're gonna eat in a pub, obviously like a burger or whatever is maybe 16, 17 pounds, plus maybe a drink, a, a soft drink will be like two, three quid, mm, plus service charge and a dessert, easily 30 quid per person. Then part of the chain, you've got the Ivy Cafe. I would really recommend that. It obviously is a little bit more money than normal. Um, but the Ivy Garden is probably my favourite one down on the King's Road. And yeah, oh my gosh, this is so funny. I remember going to this ribbon store many years ago. How old have I now? Probably, yeah, 10 years ago. But they didn't have the moss on the outside. I haven't been down here probably in about a year or so. Or maybe I didn't notice it. How cool does that look? That's a little bit better. I think my camera is not sure what to do with the sunlight. But yeah, another pub. Go in there, grab a jar of what you fancy. And uh, across here we've got 108 which is a very nice restaurant. I mean, it's quite expensive. I think I've been here about five times. Um, it's nice for a glass of wine, although they haven't got a menu out. But yeah, nice heaters, little patio set up. Oh, can't wait. Okay, this has mildly turned into like Hannah's preferences of where to eat and drink in the area. But hey, it's all good, right? I think I'm really hungry. In fact, I am really hungry. Another couple of restaurants to go to. I've never been here. Apparently this is really good. Pretty kind of basic, I think like steak chips and things like that but I like the decor it's cool and then another pub on the corner I mean there's literally five pubs a stone's throw from each other Angel in the Fields and uh says they've got some fine beers from Yorkshire's oldest brewery so hmm interesting to see all right we're gonna go up the main road now which then goes into Marlborough High Street and along here you're gonna get a little mix of bakeries cafes restaurants and some slightly higher end shops always nice to have a browse and then also down the side as well, there's lots of little shops to have a look at. Gosh, I've been so lucky with this weather. I'm loving it. Oh, this face looks cool. Got some little baked goods. <laughs> I must admit, I'm kind of struggling to film with the sun. I'm not used to it. Too many reflections. Extra posh waitrose grab a sandwich oh i am hungry right we're near the end guys i promise and one of my major recommendations is the marlebone on the corner here the nice gray one they do lots of like nice cocktails pretty casual nothing too fancy but yeah you can usually stand outside and have a drink and as we scoot along next to it this is a very famous cheese store and it's usually instagrammed but i'm obviously not going to go in because we don't need any cheese well, we do need cheese but I'm not having any cheese today. <laughs> but look how cute their little sign is. I'm not gonna pronounce it, I won't, I won't do it justice. And then also we have next to it the ginger pig, the great British butchers. You're gonna get some good stuff there, right next to the cheese shop. I almost wish it wasn't sunny because then I could easily film inside the windows, but I can't really, but you can see it's a bit of a deli situation. Oh my gosh, look at those pork pies. Can you see those? Oh no, they're not pork pies, what am I about? They're massive. Steak, Stilton and onion pie. Oh my gosh, I am so hungry. I'm about to walk home. <sighs> Yummy. Right, what's... Are you turning around? Where are you going? Give us a clue. Nope. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> right, and somewhere that, although it is a chain I would recommend, is Orbane. It is like really good value. You often get like a set menu offer um, for things like lunch. It looks like they've taken a lot of the furniture out, but I'm sure it will be back. So if you're in the area, literally we're on Moxton Street and Marlborough High Street is literally there. I really wanted to go into that shop, but we don't need anything. So we're gonna stay safe and stay out of the way. BT Tower there in the background. Lovely day indeed. 
So there is a fishmonger's there, which is usually popular. I'm surprised it is closed, but we've got lots of different home stores, premium, oh, matches, I wish. Oh, and they're delivering a skip behind me. Oh, I want this bag. It's so nice. Just wanted to show you this place, the outside. It looks adorable. The wooden shop front, obviously, closed. Comment, comment of the vlog. Everything's closed. Ah, oh, there it is. I knew there was a really cool ice cream and macaron store because I've been here a couple of times with my friends. Feels like a lifetime ago now. But yeah, if you're feeling fancy, treat yourself. I mean, it is quite expensive, let's be honest. But yeah, look how premium they look. Yummy. Oh, this vlog has turned into food again. I need to go home and have a good lunch. I've walked so far, guys. My gosh, I think I'll be walking for over two hours now. And probably my last recommendation along here is the Marlebone Bar and Natural Kitchen. I don't know if it's been renamed to home, but it's really, really cute. I've been there so many times. I haven't eaten there, actually, but you have outside seating. You can usually stand outside with a glass of rosé in the sun. Definitely a good place to go. So, yeah, you'll probably come up from the station if you come this way. Hit that pub if it's too busy carry on down and you go to the Marlborough which was the grey pub that we passed and all any of the other 500 that are along there <laughs> oh actually there's another one up here that I've been to the Prince Regent that's a really good pub as well there's just so many pubs around here guys get your fish and chips actually go to a proper fish and chip shop if you can but if not go to one of these places oh I'm being really annoying now I forgot down Paddington Street that we're on oh, I love all these like old quirky windows how cool are they there is a really good place for pizza along here and a Greek restaurant, which is amazing. So you have crazy pizza, crazy queues. This place is so popular. Let me show you the menu. If you want something a little bit more special than Pizza Express, come here. So pizza there, 14 pounds to, what have we got, maybe 22 pounds plus service. But yeah, you can briefly see in there quite nice but it is really good because you can sit outside so add that to the list if you're coming in spring or summer oh and also this place on the corner is really good this modern Greek food place but they also compete so that's Opso with the real Greek I think I prefer the real Greek they open those front doors and you can get like a big sharing thing for two people and it's not expensive at all just thinking if I could show you how much it costs to live in this one that's probably quite a good example 675 grand for a one balcony at uh, one bedroom 700 square foot flat you've got a bit more cash to splash a million quid or just under TBC what it actually went for for a two bed yeah it seems to be around just under the million mark for a two bed flat not particularly big but good location and to live in one of those beautiful buildings it seems to be significantly more but just under 2,000 square foot three million for three bedroom oh a bit steep now this vlog has ended up being a little bit long hasn't it it's turned into a tour um but this was part of my daily exercise or this is my daily exercise i am not walking any more than this i need to check my my fitbit but i have done i'm definitely going to do well over 10,000 steps today or at least i hope i'm just walking up the street because madame two swords is up there and then it is time for me to go home now as i've said before not all my vlogs are going to be like little tours i kind of like to mix it up do like maybe one specific tour a week one kind of home mixed day vlog um and probably something shopping related so i hope you're enjoying um we are well into february now it is soon valentine soon middle of the month and uh yeah spring is coming and i am so pleased about it um each night i keep thinking like what time or noting what time I close my curtains which makes me sound like an old lady but it was like quarter past five yesterday amazing and to finish off this tour we have got the famous Madame Tussauds with a bus that's gonna block the view <laughs> <laughs> I have never been here if you have been here is there any good have the discussion in the comments I'm not sure how I feel about it um sometimes the wax works don't really look like them but Yes, this is a very, very famous one. You can pre-book your time slot. Back in the day, you weren't able to, and literally everyone would be just queuing. Drive past at maybe like 10 o'clock in the morning, and the queue would be like 10 coaches long, and they'd all be queuing outside, even in the rain. With that view in the background, and a lot of noise from the road, I'm gonna love and leave you guys. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this little walk around. 
I'll be back in a few days time. Don't know where I'm gonna go. If you've got anywhere that you really wanna see. I'm not gonna go on the tube though. I need to be walking distance. I'm very fortunate I live so near it's so many good places. Um, but yeah, if you would like to come and say hi on Instagram, I took loads of pics today. I mean, slowly uploading those, making my gram look really good. I'm really not very good at Instagram, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, and if you would like to subscribe, please do so. Um, and join our little adventures around the city. Right, trucks keep going past, so I'm gonna say bye. So I will see you in a few days time. Bye.